So what I have here with me today are two completely different cameras. One with a built-in flash and one with a built-in pop-up flash. The cool thing about this pop-up flash over here is that when I trigger it, you'll see that my secondary flash triggers as well. However, if I try using this tiny little camera and I try to take a picture with a flash, you'll see that guy there does not work along with it. So why is that? How do these two cameras communicate? You may think that they communicate using some sort of radio signal, but that's not how they talk. In fact, if I cover up the sensor over here, you'll see that my secondary flash does not trigger at all. So they communicate in a different way. In fact, they use light. Let's figure that out in today's super duper nerdy episode. So how would you figure out what exactly is this light trying to communicate? After all, it's flashing really fast. You could try using a high speed camera like what you can find in a cell phone, but unfortunately the speed of that flash is way too quick for even my cell phone camera to handle. Turns out what I have over here is an oscilloscope, a device that's really great at reading high speed signals. But how can it actually see the light? There actually is one easier approach. All you need is an LED. Any LED will do. In fact, if you want it to be a bit more sensitive, you'll want to choose a red LED. And if you want something that's less sensitive, but will give you a higher voltage reading, then you'll choose a blue LED. And if you want to figure out why that's true, well, you'll have to wait for another episode. But let's stick with this one for now. When I transmit the signal, you'll see two totally different spikes. One spike earlier with a lot of up and downs, and then one spike about 50 milliseconds later. That's about 1 20th of a second afterwards. Now that second one is just to tell the camera flash that it's ready to take a picture. But the first one, there's actually a secret message inside of it. Let's see what it says. And you'll see there's a bunch of ones and zeros over here. There's a leading flash at the beginning, followed by a moment of silence, followed by five consecutive flashes. Then silence, two flashes, two silences, and then two flashes again. If you have trouble seeing it, that's why I have this little label over here so that you can actually measure out the time difference of each one. I know it's ghetto, but it works. That way I can actually time everything out because it's not in pretty numbers. All right, so the second time round, I have the flash set at the most intense setting. Let's see what happens to the pattern now. So let's try to explain what these flashes and non-flashes really mean. Here's my spreadsheet. So what I did was I started off with channel three at the flash's lowest intensity and I recorded all the information. I slowly upgraded the intensity until I reached maximum intensity and I recorded its values as well. I also observed about what happens with these two digits over here as I change the intensity by a small fraction, either a third less down to the next lower value or two thirds less down to the next lowest value. And I noticed that it affected these two bits over here. So let's just talk about what's happening over here. In fact, I've summarized it here on the right hand side. The first flash is the lead flash. It just initiates the entire communications protocol. If there's absolutely no silence, that means we're communicating on channel one. If there's half a moment of a silence, then it's channel two. If it's a full moment of silence, it's channel three, which is the one I normally use. And if it's a full moment of a silence and another half, then it's talking to channel number four. The next 14 moments is a sync pulse. There are five bright light flashes followed by five moments of silence. Two bright light flashes followed by two moments of silence. After that, the next two bits just indicate how much less you want the intensity to decrease by, by a small fractional amount. Either at its full intensity of that value, or a third stop less, or maybe even a two-third stop less. The last three bits indicates the intensity. 111 means at the brightest possible, meanwhile 000 is at its minimum. In fact, if you look at the table on the left, it increments by double each time, or a full stop. Now you have up to a 55 millisecond delay because that's the moment for the two machines to calibrate and the last flash says the camera and the flash should flash in unison. In fact, you can bring this right after the last bit so you can decrease the time to transmit all the information. So we now figured out the communications protocol, but that's only half the nerd fun. The next half of the nerd fun is to try to mimic it. And one way to mimic it 
is to record all that information onto this chip over here known as a microcontroller. Microcontrollers are little chips that you can program and they're really good at repeating very basic commands over and over and over again. Excellent for our experiment today. So let's get started on the coding side. So here's the software environment that I use towards coding those chips. It's called MPLAB IDE version 8.92. Why 8.92 you might ask? Because there's less buttons. The, the newer the version it is, the more buttons there are and the more complicated it is. So I always like using the easiest version. And here is all of my code. I'll post a copy of it at the bottom of this video. So we start off with the generic pinouts of the microcontroller I'm planning on using. And these are the general pins I'm going to be stealing and using the information there afterwards. There's a bunch of initialization code up here, which again, if you're familiar with that particular chip, you know what all these mean. But here's where the interesting part happens. Here are these call routines, where at the bottom, I've actually written code for either a one or a zero. So this will tell, turn on an LED for a certain moment in time or leave it off for a certain moment in time. Remember what I said earlier about those ones and zeros? The first one is my initialization flash, followed by a moment of silence to indicate I want to use channel three. Five ones for five bright, bright flashes, five moments of silence. Two bright moments, two moments of silence. One one, meaning that I don't want to divide it by any fraction. And lastly, zero, 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 meaning the weakest flash of them all. If I wanted the brightest, then I'll make it one, one, one. The last flash is the one to engage and allow both the camera flash as well as the secondary flash to ignite both at once. Now this half a second delay just causes this program to loop itself over and over and over. That way, this tiny little LED just keeps on broadcasting the same exact signal. Now that we've completed writing the code, we need to transfer the code onto the chip itself. How in the world do you do that? Well, you have to get one of these things and they're called microcontroller programmers. This particular model is known as the Picket 3. I'll leave a copy of the link of where you can buy it in the description below. If you decide to get one of these things, make sure that you click on my affiliate link as uh, I need a bit more cash right now. Google's not paying me enough to do these videos. Oh, and uh, as an added bonus, if you want these chips for free, as long as you're a student or even a starving teacher, you can actually request one from microchip.com. Free samples, kids. All right, for the programming part now. Fairly straightforward, as long as you coded everything properly, you simply hit F10 and cross your fingers and hope for the best. And seeing that it blinks, that means we've successfully transferred the code onto the chip. Every time that this red light blinks, that means it's blasting that code through this infrared transmitter. And here's my chip with the compiled code. You'll see that there is an LED and it's red just to show you that the code is running. And then the second LED, you can't see anything at all. And it's because this one's transmitting infrared light. In fact, that's how the camera communicates with the flash using a different wavelength of light that we can't see with the naked eye. So how can we prove that this light is even flashing at all? Well, that's when my old school camcorder comes into play. This old camera over here, it can actually see infrared light. So here's my red LED, and here is my infrared LED blasting out lots and lots of light. So a signal is actually being sent. I guess the last thing to do is to test it out. Here we go now. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. If I block it, no more communication. I unblock it, and it's transmitting the communication protocol. Isn't that neat? Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and for more nerdy adventures like this, make sure you click like and subscribe. Until our next adventure together.